Hey everyone, thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode 15 of the Dan Keesling Podcast. Just did a quick dial back. Our first episode was August 20th, and it uh, doesn't seem like we've done 15 episodes, but nonetheless, thank you guys so much for dialing in today. This is another audio journal update. What's been going on? If you like some inside baseball, you like to see, well, why is he doing this? How is it working? And uh, what's not working? So we're going to talk a lot about, about that. I'm going to give you guys an update, kind of what's going on behind the scenes. But I want to thank you guys so much, first and foremost, for tuning in, spending time with me this afternoon, morning, evening, wherever you happen to be. Maybe you're on the treadmill. Maybe you're driving. Maybe you're in transit. Maybe you're in class right now and you should be paying attention to your teacher, but you're not. And, and if that's the case, tweet me. So so I, maybe I just called you out individually. But nonetheless, super excited to jump in. We're going to get right to it. It's definitely a potpourri type episode. I'm going to be talking a lot about what's been going on the past week. Binary wise, this happened, this didn't happen, this was good, this was not. So we're going to jump right in. One of the things I've been meaning to talk about, because I don't take it lightly, and I feel like I've talked a lot about this, uh, or at least a decent amount about this during the live show on Twitch. And... um. And that's is when I start something, I want to finish it. And a while back, we started Red Dead Redemption 2 on the channel, and I made the decision to cancel it for a lot of reasons, but to boil it down pretty quickly is uh, I, I've started to learn that a, games with a lot of story and dialogue don't necessarily do so well on the show because I feel like that's one of the areas where we excel. We, we make up the story. We kind of make up lore. And when there's a lot of dialogue, it's just a little bit of dead air. And maybe that's something I need to experiment more with on the channel, but it just, it didn't, it didn't feel normal, which maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it helps to push the boundaries of the show, but at the same time, it didn't feel like a, a natural fit into what we normally do. And I'm always open to doing that. So one of the things I hate disappointing the audience, right? So even now, this this decision was made probably three or four weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, to not continue the series. And I'll still get messages on Twitch and even on, on Twitter saying, hey, Dan, where's Red Dead Redemption? And, and I heavily, heavily dislike that. Not I don't dislike getting the messages. I, I'm, I feel very fortunate that people want to dial in and see it. I just don't like disappointing people by starting something and not finishing it. It's kind of like... It's, I mean, it's, it's not at this level of self uh, aggrandizing, but imagine if you had a show that you like to watch on NBC or Netflix and the first three episodes came, came out and you're like, oh, I really liked it. And they cancel it or it just kind of went away. You'd be like, uh, what's up with that NBC? What, what happened to it? You know? And, and so I just don't like doing that. So if we start something, I like to finish it. But at the same time, if, if it doesn't feel right, if it's not the right move at the time, I, I got to pull the plug. So I think for me that, that that added another feather in my cap in terms of things to be careful of selecting playing games moving forward. And the flip side though, I'm not opposed to playing in the future, which I think is, is the ironic part about it. Maybe when the PC release comes out, I would play it on, on Twitch, but uh, cause it's a really fun game. It's really good. If you haven't played red dead redemption two, I highly recommend it, you know, and I guess that's the irony of it all too. And I think one of the things that played into it for me to make it a little bit easier to pull the plug on is that it was so popular, right? If one of my mindsets and one of the things that, you know, I feel like I've learned and it's important to me is that when people are zigging, I'm zagging. When people are zagging, I'm zigging, meaning that if everyone's playing Red Dead Redemption 2 on Twitch and YouTube, it's probably not the best idea for me to be doing that as someone who's growing a channel, not someone who's, you know, it just doesn't make sense on a baseball behind the fourth wall type decision. So ironically enough, one of the things I did want to say, and I felt like not to come clean with you guys, but you guys know that this, this podcast is where, you know, you get to come behind the curtain and, and, and see what's going on. I, it was extremely ironic the day after I made the announcement that we were canceling Red Dead Redemption 2, the, the European TV station conglomerate reached out to me and said, hey, Dan, you want to know what games we want for, for November? And, uh, they wanted Red Dead Redemption 2. So I'm actually playing it for Game Tune, ironically enough. And um, But it, it just kind of worked out that way. It, that was not the reason why I canceled it. It was just kind of funny timing. So I wanted to update everyone on that. And then I feel like one of the things we talk a lot about on this podcast, and it's probably because it's not to where I know it needs to be on my end is YouTube. The execution flat out is not there. Now let's talk about the good things first. The switch to the second channel has been amazing. You guys heard me talk about it last week. It's going, it's doing well. I feel like each video is getting somewhere between 100 and 200 views, which is not necessarily the, um, 
it's not the focus. The focus is to make everything easily accessible for people that miss things on Twitch and the long form content. So I'm very fired up with that. I think it's going really well. Zane's doing a great job managing it, which, which dials us back to the first channel, the channel where, you know, it's YouTube exclusive content and flat out. This is not me being hard on myself. The execution's not there. The, the, it, what that boils down to is two things. I am not providing the audience that is at YouTube what they want to see. So let me get into that. I, I put up a new style Tarkov video because you know me, I'm trying new things to find out. You don't just keep doing the same thing over and over again and then expect it to to work or people to want to watch it. You got to change it up. So I did a new style Tarkov video this past week where it's more so taking a look at what's going on in the community in terms of there's some new items and a new gun that's supposed to be released. So I, I did, it was almost like a Star Citizen, what I used to do for Star Citizen. The video did okay. I had something like 750 views and... Um, so I'm going to give you metrics now. So the new Tarkov video, 750 views, NBA 2K19. I wanted to bring it back just to see, you know, cause a lot of people tweet me and say, Hey Dan, where's NBA 2K19? We want to see it. 650 views. And here's the thing. I don't want to get caught up on the numbers per se, because I feel, and this is just, just being straight up. I feel fortunate that people want to watch that at the same time. I need to find out what people who are subscribed there, what they want to watch. And, you know, I could kind of keep looking at, looking at it in the mouth and I don't really, I don't think I really need to figure it out. I just need to, to figure out if it works. And so the new Tarkov video got 750 views, NBA 2K19, 650 views. I did a first look at Star Citizen 3.3, 6,000 views. I mean, if you want to boil it down simply, it, that's about as simple as it gets. What do people want to see on the channel that are subscribed there? Uh, I, I don't think I need to, to debate it anymore. It's taking a step back and looking at it now. So I look at this and, and, and at, at YouTube on the exclusive YouTube channel, I look at it in two ways. And this is, I've been trying other things on the channel, like NBA, Slay the Spire, Tarkov. And I'm not, like I said, I just want to reiterate because, you know, I'll get a couple of messages to say, hey, Dan, you're being hard on yourself. I'm not. It's just flat out, I'm not executing on it. And I think partly because there's no direction on the channel right now, meaning that, you know, recently, I have a friend uh, who streams on Twitch and we've been texting back and going back and forth. He reached out to me and said, Hey Dan, you know, like, you know, Hey, I want to grow more on Twitch. What do you recommend? And, and by no, no means do I feel like I'm an expert. What I do feel like I have is five to six years of experience of doing things, trying things that have worked and things that have worked for me. And so kind of the advice or the things I'm trying to help them with is that I tell them my success from Twitch have, have come from a very, very small number of things. Number one, being extremely consistent, streaming Monday, Wednesday, and Friday within the same one hour window. Now the show time has changed. We start at 1 p.m. now instead of two. But for the most part, people know Monday, Wednesday, and Friday where to go, where to be. There, People are going to be dialed in. I feel like I put on a good show there. I feel like I, I, I don't like using the word good content, I, but I, I just, for whatever reason, I just don't like the word content, but uh, I feel like I put on good entertainment there that, that people come and they know what to expect. They're dialed in. They know they're going to get the first part of the show is going to be Tarkov. The second part is going to be a single player game and a certain style of a game. I think people after doing that for almost a year and a half, year and three quarters, two years now, people know what to expect. So People come to the channel. They they know. Hey, look, Lost is on Tuesday nights at six p.m. I'm not con I'm not comparing the Dan Geesling show on Twitch to Lost, but people know what to expect. So that's that's what I've been trying to help him dial in with. And like I said, this is not coming from a place of being an expert. It's just a place of hey, this has been my experience, and I think it's worked. So I you know I want my friends to be successful too. If they're if they're here's my thing too is that is that if people are happy with what they're doing, where they're at with their community, with their viewership, that's awesome. And, and I'm not going to give anyone unsolicited advice, but if someone comes and said, Hey Dan, like I'm not happy with this. I want to grow it. I'm going to do whatever I can to help them. It's kind of like a, a, not a metaphor for life, but kind of like the same thing. People have different goals and different experiences and different things they want to do. And the only time I have an issue with that personally because that, that's a no judgment zone is if someone complains, right? So if you're complaining, you're not happy with what's going on. So my question to you is, what are you going to do about it, right? So if you're happy with where things are, you're probably not going to be complaining or whatever you're complaining about, do something about it. But anyways, we got off on a little bit of a tangent. So if I'm in, in it, when I was doing the show notes for today to come up with, you know, what we're talking about the show, if I'm giving this advice that has worked for me on it, 
experience level to one of my friends, why don't the same principles apply to YouTube? Well, let me dial back and go back to the two things I'm not doing on YouTube. I'm not providing the audience what they want to see, and I'm not doing it consistently. So that's why it's not growing. You know, it's not brain surgery. Yeah, and you know, I feel like I've been throwing a different, a lot of different things at at the wall on YouTube, and it's not working, which is fine. But at the same time, there are some things working that I'm I'm not doing, and so I can't point the finger at anyone. Uh, but myself and uh, you know, it's just really kind of lit a fire on me to just be way more consistent. And what does that mean? It means, Hey, uh, binary or granularly on Sunday, which is the day I normally record my podcast is look, you have to do seven. I don't have to do anything. I want to do seven exclusive videos on YouTube a week, seven. And let's say the average length of each video is 20 to 30 minutes. That is the 210 minutes divided by an hour. That's like three to five hours of content. Like I should be able to knock that out in a day or two early. And so I'm just, there's really no excuses. It's, it's either you do it or you, or you don't do it. And I haven't done it. And so this, you know, even just talking about this on the podcast, it makes you say, all right, Dan, well, well, if you're not going to do it, don't do it. But that's not what I want to do. I want to do it. So I just got to find a way and uh, get it done. So I, so to kind of like uh, to kind of bring this to a head is that uh, I feel like I know I've been I don't want to say not making excuses I've been trying to figure out something new to do when something I've been doing in the past has been working and but at the same time one of the things I don't want to lose with YouTube is the the ability to experiment right so right now. I think if, if I were to ask anyone, even in the most dialed in people in the community, hey, hey, if I said, hey, what do you what do you watch on my YouTube channel or what do you expect to see on my YouTube channel? I don't know what they would say. And, and that's that's an issue that can be corrected. But on the flip side, if I were to ask someone in the community, hey, what do you expect to see on Twitch? I could probably tell you down to three or four bullet points, what they're going to say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, clean, positive entertainment. The first part's going to be Tarkov. Second part's going to be a dark souls S game. That's it. I mean, it's really, it's not that complicated. And I think maybe, and it would be funny for me to go back and listen. And this, I think this will be the fun of the whole podcast sometimes too, internally is to go back and to listen to some of these podcasts where I'm like dinking and dunking around about trying different things on YouTube. And I always, I always feel like that's the right answer is you, if you don't know what's working, try different things. But uh, yeah, I think there'll be moments of clarity is in particular with you guys know how much I want to not how much I want to grow YouTube. I, I think it's a vital part of, of success in, in turn, at least for me, how I define success moving forward and not relying on a single platform long term. Um, I, I just feel like that's that's a key point. And uh, I think there's going to be moments of clarity, and I think this is going to be one of them. But I, I guess we shall tell uh, this upcoming week on YouTube basing on how it goes. And I think that's it. ultimately that's the fun part of what I'm able to do, what I've kind of grown this uh, this passion or hobby into a small side business, not side business. Now it's it's taking up a lot more time and, and it's justifiable. And um, even though from a revenue standpoint, since splitting the channel, just to give you guys inside numbers, I think uh, the YouTube revenue is down 25%. And that, that's not, it's not a cause for concern. It's not anything I'm concerned with, but just it's just worth pointing out is that that's not the focus of that. And, um, but anyway, sometimes I know people like to, to know that kind of stuff. So outside of that, you know, I'm really happy with channel two. It's working and, and it gives people a place to access the archives. And I feel like if you've ever seen, if you haven't seen it, there's a documentary on Netflix and oh, I can't think of the name of it, but it, it has Edmund McMillan in it. I can see that the title screen of it, but um, it's indie game, the movie, that's what it is. And one of the things I, for whatever reason, I remember in that movie, it's a good documentary. It, it tracks three independent game developers. I'm saying the, late 2000s like 08 09 010 ish and it tracks your development of a game and one of the things that really sticks out in my head is that it 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 does a little detailed breakdown of uh, Edmund McMillan talking about Super Meat Boy and how he what he says he juices a game mechanic so meaning that if there's a buzzsaw in a game 
it's not just used one time. It's used one time eight different ways because it takes a lot of time to develop a single game mechanic like a buzzsaw. And so I kind of feel that same way about the content and the show on Twitch, right? So to only make to to make an original show on Twitch and to have it live and die there, I feel like it's not being juiced. But now with the second channel on YouTube, you're you're squeezing the orange, getting a little bit more juice in a different area. Is it the same type of potent, strong juice that is going to draw the same amount of attention and eyeballs and and people dialing in? No, but it's better than only getting one cup of juice. I don't know if that makes sense, but I hope it does. And then to take that one step further, you know, going to Instagram. And I, I we talked about a little bit of self-auditing in the last episode. I know for a fact, and it's funny, and I'm super fired up for him. But uh, one of uh, my friends in the industry, Deadly Slop, I just saw he just started Instagram. And I got fired up. I'm like, I'm, I'm happy for him because he's a very smart guy. And I... I I think there's a lot of opportunity to grow on Instagram from a gaming perspective to bolster your gaming brand, bring new people in, give people another place to look at highlights, different clips that are already part of the community. I just feel like it's good. So I was fired up to see him do that, but to kind of even add more juice to that, uh, one of the self-identified issues I have with creating content on Instagram for myself is that I'm always looking for the perfect clip so much so that I, I now have Zane, the editor, send me a clip every day to put on Instagram and I'll look at them and I'm like, I don't, I don't like it. It's not, it's not good for Instagram. And rather than post something that's not what I don't think is good, I just don't post anything at all, which isn't good. It's better for me and my, I know it's the right thing to do to post something that I may not feel 10 out of 10 on. Maybe it's six out of 10 is better than posting nothing. And so, and I feel like when I look for the perfect clip to post on YouTube, I'm talking about like a Twitch highlight or something from an episode. I, when I say look for the perfect clip, I'm very aware of the audience on Instagram that there's some people that are super dialed into what we're doing uh, in gaming. And there's a lot of people from like the big brother community that may not be into it. So when I pick clips for Instagram, I try to make sure they're, they're very broad based, right? So I'm not talking about uh, an SKS Lightwood Jackie with a scope on top and a suppressor bopping a scab from 300 meters away in customs. Let's be honest. I've never done that anyways, but because that's going to go over a lot of people's heads, but at the same time, it, it may not matter, right? So, but it, it does matter, but it doesn't matter. Meaning that if if the decision is to post a clip like that or not, the decision is always post that clip versus not posting something. On the flip side, talking about juicing content, I dialed back and I couldn't find a clip I was happy with. And, but I went way back into the archives on Twitch and there was a Twitch clip when I was playing, I was playing a, a random PUBG game with someone and saying, uh, how did you get your name? And I'm like, well, Dan Giesling's my name. So that's my name. He's like, no, that's not your name. Uh, you, you're not an American TV personality made for like a very ironic and, and somewhat smirky clip. And so I put that on YouTube because that's the type of thing that on, on Instagram. That's the type of thing that I feel like has a broad base appeal to the people that follow me on Instagram because you don't have to be a fan of PUBG or even gaming to maybe get a laugh or smile out of that. So, and I think the thing is, is that I'm just talking about not executing on YouTube, flat out not executing on Instagram. And it's good, you know, it's good for me to have these moments of, of honesty with you guys. It's like you, either you're doing it or you're not. And if you're not doing it, what the I've, whatever you're about to say the reason is for not doing something maybe for you it's like you want to go to the gym twice a week or you want to eat better or you want to get home a little earlier from the office whatever it is it's really simple you either do it or you don't on youtube i'm either executing or i'm not not executing on instagram i'm either putting up seven clips a week or i'm not that's it and if you say to me in my the way i frame things in in my head is that If you're not doing it, it's an excuse, right? Well, I couldn't find a a good clip that I liked. Uh, That's an excuse. You you could put something up that may not be 10 out of 10, 5 out of 10. Oh, well, I, you know, I got home at 530 instead of 5 from the office. Well, what were you doing from 5 to 530? I don't know. I was talking at the old water cooler. Well, you did it or you didn't. And and I know for some people that doesn't work, but for me it does. It's just the more that you can, the more that I look at things as, as binary or yes or no, 
then it makes things a lot simpler. And so then if it's something to me is important, like YouTube, like Instagram, you find a way to, to make it important and get better at it and, and realize and self audit. Like, so for me, it's not like I, you know, I had the goal to post seven clips a week on Instagram. It's important to me, but the ex, the, the actions I've taken show that it's not. So I don't just throw in the towel. I'm like, okay, I, I'm very self-aware. I've neglected it. And it's not something I should do. It's something I want to do. And so it's just kind of moving the needle there. And I know when when I on a little bit of a tangent, but it's just how I approach a lot of things. You're either doing it or you're not. And I think in some ways, I'm in in some ways, I'm doing things really well. Like I think the Twitch show is going really well, being very consistent with it. I I, I think it it's consistently been a lot of clean, positive entertainment. The community, I'll tell you, a huge thing that's been a huge win or something I'm so fired up about is the community discord at uh, dangeasing.tv slash discord, a place for people who are in the community to hang out. It's just recently. And I feel like I talk about this every episode or every podcast, but it's because I'm fired up about it. It's just, it's super active. People are playing games together. They're encouraging each other. There's, you know, there's just stuff going on and, and I'm super fired up about that. Uh, but outside of that, it, it kind of brings us to, to one other thing that this is, it's going to be another test week for me is, uh, you know, looking at, and I know I'm jumping a half step back here, but looking back at YouTube and looking back at what's going on in Star Citizen, a big two back to back big updates just hit Star Citizen. And I've taken, you guys know, I've taken about 10 steps back from Star Citizen just because the gameplay hasn't been there for me to enjoy on a consistent level. But now I think I'm going to jump back in and really give it a shot because, you know, I feel like when you're looking at what you want to create versus what people want to see, it's a very fine line to walk. And bottom line is that that's what people want to see on YouTube. And so I think that I don't think I know that's what I need to be providing. In addition to experimenting with other things, almost like a, a direct mirror of Twitch, right? So on Twitch, people really want to see Tarkov. I have a lot of fun with it. So we play Tarkov and we sample with a game on the back end. And that's the thing I was talking to the individual that I, that uh, asked me about some, some Twitch advice. I said, I didn't know Tarkov was going to work. We, we were playing PUBG for a long time and I feel like the show like stabled off in terms of growth wise with that. And then I can still remember the way Tarkov started on the show. I said, all right, Hey, look, you know, I was PUBG was getting a little, it was just, I feel like it plateaued on multiple levels, not just viewership, but also internally and creatively. And, um, I'm like, all right, Hey, we're going to try out this new game for about 30 minutes at the end of the show. And it was super intense People really enjoyed it. I, I just, I can almost like see it in my head and I'm like, but that's how Tarkov started on the show. It wasn't like, oh, I had this big master plan that Tarkov was going to be the main game of Twitch that we were going to play. It just kind of happens. And I feel like that's going to, that's what YouTube needs to be is that there needs to be a consistent run of something and then take it from there. Um, so outside of that, that's kind of, that's what's been going on on the back end from from youtube what's been going on the channel the past week and i feel like we're probably about due which i appreciate i think we're probably about due next week I'll, we'll do another interview and uh, i have like the a loose list of of people i'd like to interview on the show and pencil in my head they're all you know friends and and acquaintances and stuff in the industry but um you know i I feel like it's it's like a it's a good sprinkle, right? You know, you, you always got to change it up. And I know people really like to hear interviews on the podcast. And the same time, you know, people give feedback and say, hey, Dan, you're, uh, you know, we enjoy the solo stuff. You know, don't don't forget about the solo stuff. So it's fun. And, and I think bottom line is uh, I just really enjoy this. And, and it, it's, uh, you know, from the podcast to Twitch to YouTube, I feel very, very fortunate that, you know, I get to do this and that you know, you guys enjoy what I do and, and are, give feedback and say, we like this, we don't like this. And, and I just feel very grateful. So if you dialed in the podcast, you're, you're part of the Twitch community, you're part of the Discord community, you've watched a single video on YouTube, you know, thank you guys. I, I, I truly appreciate it. So with that, we're going to wrap things up and go into the Q&A of the day. I, I, I put it out on Twitter about 
the beginning of the podcast, and there was an individual named Soad Fan Bob. He said in his question of the day is, what are some tips on staying positive in the industry and in life? And I talked a lot about this, I think, throughout, and I think inadvertently this question affected how I approach this podcast because I kind of had this in mind, but I look at it as a couple ways, you know, I look at it as there's so much opportunity right now, meaning that the, the climate that we live in with the internet and YouTube and Twitch and all these different streaming platforms and podcasts, like the barrier to entry to start a Twitch show is extremely, extremely little. The, the ability, the barrier to put a video on YouTube non exist there's no barrier the the barrier to create a podcast there's you can do whatever you want and i feel like we're almost in a gold still and i I truly believe this this is how i approach i feel like we're in a gold rush era of opportunity on the internet meaning that if you want to talk about dark souls make a channel about dark souls and over time you're going to get good at it and people are going to want to see that or whatever you're doing i just i don't feel like You know, one of the things I push back on a little bit internally, and I don't talk about it outward, but when I hear people say, oh, Twitch is too saturated. Like, what do you like? I don't think so. Like, my opinion is there's a lot of room for growth. I don't feel like I, I don't know the numbers on how many people watch Twitch, but I don't think that we're anywhere near any kind of max capacity of people even finding out about Twitch. I feel like there's still a lot of people that have no clue what Twitch is and look where, where Twitch is now with, yeah, I just feel like the, such a small percentage of the population knows what Twitch is. And I think there's a large percentage of the population that would enjoy Twitch and just don't know that it exists. And I, I and this is not, this is just based on my subjective opinion, but I remember when I first learned that people did, gaming videos on YouTube and then there was Twitch. I'm like, what? Like how I was such a big fan of video games. Like how did I not even know this existed or that people do this or that people are entertaining while doing this? And this was, you know, five years ago, six years ago. And so I just feel like the same way. I just feel like there's a lot of people that enjoy gaming and just don't know about Twitch. It's like the same thing. You know, I I equate it to on a granular individual level, people will come into the Twitch show and be like, Hey, I didn't know you stream on Twitch. And internally, I'm like, well, I've been streaming on Twitch since December 2012, but there's just people out there that don't know. And, you know, that's that that falls on me to make sure, you know, to continue to create good content so that people find out about it. But um, anyway, so so to kind of so that's one tip. What are some tips on staying positive in the industry? I just feel like there's a lot of opportunity. And when you I feel like when I approach it that way, which is how I genuinely feel about it. Like the world's kind of your oyster. The second thing is that there's really only, you know, one, I think, thought leader that I look at on a business level. I've talked about him from time to time. His name's Gary V, G A R Y V E E. And he talks about perspective. And, you know, there's gonna be things that that go wrong, like right now. So I'm not executing on YouTube. Not happy with where that is. But in the grand scheme of life, that's an ex- extremely minuscule problem, and it's not even a problem. Or it's 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 a welcome challenge that I'm excited about. Meaning, he one of the things he said that's kind of stuck out with me because I listen to his podcast is that he says that you know if you have a problem, think about there's an individual there's individuals out there in the world that have to walk seven plus miles to get a glass of clean water or to get clean water, and when you're able to like keep that in your forefront of your head, it puts everything in perspective, you know, like something bad happens. It's really not that bad. You know, it's, it's not a big, like we, it's just not that big of an issue. And so I think that really helps, you know, and, um, it it helps me for sure. Another thing that, you know, when I talk about like staying positive, it's kind of like trying to stay as level headed as possible. Right. Cause I talk over the past six, three to six months, Twitch has really, really, really grown, uh, on, you know, on a bunch of different levels for me. But I think about, you know, I, this this coach once told me this when I was interning in the NFL. He said, Dan, nothing is ever as good as it seems and nothing is ever as bad as it seems. And it's kind of just a reminder for me to keep a level head, right? Like that, you know, it, things are going well on Twitch, but, you know, keep it in perspective. And when things go bad, just keep it in perspective. It's not that big of a deal. Another thing that really helps me stay positive, you know, when in, in the industry and in life is that, and this is a rough one. And if you take this the wrong way, 
I hope you don't, but I just think it's true. It's a big realization that no one cares, right? So if you have a problem and you're complaining, no one really cares. The only thing that matters is what are you going to do to fix it? And it sounds really harsh, but when you come to that realization, you spend your time not complaining and you spend your time thinking about how do I come up with a solution? Let me give you guys a scenario that we just talked about. Oh, my YouTube channel, it's not where I want it to be. I, I don't know what to do. Oh, my goodness. The videos, oh, the revenue's down 25%. What am I going to do? This is terrible. I, that never, ever crosses my head. It just doesn't. It's like, okay, I approach it. Okay, this isn't where I want it to be. What can I do to fix it? And I don't, I don't complain about it. I don't tweet and say, oh, thanks guys for not watching my YouTube videos. You know, thank you. You know, sarcastic. Like I just don't, that's not how I approach it. And so when you realize that when you complain, no one really cares, it, you stop complaining. And, uh, it was, it, if you can frame that in the context of your life, it may sound kind of brutal, but I'd rather it feel brutal for you. And then you'd be like, whoa, do you see an impact on what you're trying to do? Then me just be like, oh, yeah, people care when you complain. They don't. They really don't. Just don't. I don't know what else to say. And so that's really helped me. And then the real two big ones, and, and I talked about this early on in the podcast that really moved the needle for me on staying positive is when you have success, of course, you're going to be more positive. But what allowed me to get there is I stopped caring what people think. There's a few people in, in my close circle slash family that I'm like, yo, what are they going to think about this? And it probably took me to like year 34 of my life to be like, I don't care what they think about it anymore. And that's like a really hard thing to get to. But when you get there and you don't care if you're doing things that you're being true to yourself, whether, you know, for me, it's always being goofy on Twitch or doing stuff that I normally would do just by myself or with some close friends that I wasn't doing on Twitch. I'm like, why am I not doing that? Well, I'm worried about so-and-so things. Well, why are you worried about that? I'm like, I didn't have an answer. So when I got to that point, and if you get to a point where you really don't care what others think, as long as you're doing what's authentic to you, you're going to be a lot more positive because you're just going to be a lot happier. And I think the last thing that that um, helps me stay positive, in, in particular in the industry and in life, is that I just have a definition of my own success, right? So my success isn't what someone else's success is. For example, you know, my success isn't to make a million dollars a month on Twitch or YouTube or in game. It's just not my goal. It's not my goal in general to, to do that. It's, and so when you look at other people's definition of success and you say, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not there yet. It doesn't matter. You, you have to define your own, what you view as the success, where you want to go. And then when you place that roadmap for yourself and you're making progress towards it, you're going to be positive and happy because you know where you're going. You don't have this, this definition of success that's defined by someone other than what you want to do. And, um, you know, those, I, I mean, there's a couple points in there. I'll do a quick recap, but that was a big one for me. So focusing on opportunity, keeping things in perspective, knowing that nothing is ever as good as it seems, nothing ever as bad as it seems, having the realization that people don't care when you complain. Like, oh, I'm really tired at the office today. I didn't get much sleep. Do you really think your coworkers care? How do you feel when they complain to you? I'm just being honest. Like, do you think they care? They don't. They really don't. And uh, so that's a big one. Uh, get, getting to a point where you don't care what other people think on what you do. And the last one for me is, is really just defining your own success. What does success look like to you? Not what does success look like to the number one streamer on Twitch or your friends in the industry or what whoever thinks you should be a success or do whatever. You know, and um, I think that's why I take a lot of pride in, and I got to be careful about it, but I take a lot of pride in the car that I own because to me, it's a representation of success. You know, I drive a 2009 Ford Escape with 86,000 miles on it. Like to me, that's a definition of success, meaning, you know, it's a, what is it? An eight-year-old car, nine-year-old car. I just don't care, right? Like I don't care what car I drive. And there's a lot of people that care what car they drive because it's important to them, which is cool. No judgment. Like if you like cars, get a 2018 escape with 10 miles on it. But that's a big thing is that not judging someone for if they like cars, good for them. But for me, I really like my car because of what it stands for. Meaning that I don't, 
I'm not influenced by someone to have a brand new car. It just doesn't matter to me. And but it's and some people are influenced to buy a new car because so and so has one or so you know whatever. And this is a really off the beaten path end of the podcast. But I'm just this is an audio journal. I'm telling you guys exactly how I feel. And and so and when I say I got to be careful about taking pride in, as I just. I don't like taking pride in things, but for that kind of what it represents for me is that it's a, it's a flag in the ground internally saying that I don't care what people think of, of the car that I drive, you know? And, um, I think it just all comes for full circle when you can get to a point in that in your life and figure out what it is you want to do and be successful, how you define success for yourself. You're going to be a lot more positive, a lot happier. And, um, you know, you're going to enjoy yourself. And, and I, and I, and I say this from a point of not being an expert, because there's a lot of things that, you know, I I'm working on and a lot of things that I'm continuing to dial in on. And, and one of those things is, is work life balance and, and really maximizing every second of every day and the time away from my family. I need to be, I know I need to get better at in terms of being super dialed in, but, um, you know, it's just from a place of this is what's worked for me. This is kind of what helped me get to this point. And the different mental switches in the head that help me get to kind of where I'm at now. And, and I think will help continue to move the needle forward as things continue to grow. So with that being said, I hope you guys, you know, so ad fan, Bob, thank you for the thought provoking question on Twitter. And I like to thank you guys so much for tuning into episode 15 of the podcast it means a lot that you guys spent this time with us. And, uh, you know, you continue to enjoy the podcast and thanks to those people. There's been, there's been some people that have been tweeting it out off the top of my head. I know Murdoch has been tweeting out anytime there's a new podcast, you know, when people share it, that's a great way to, to endorse the show. And, uh, you know, a great way to say, to, you know, show your appreciation, which you don't have to do, but I truly do. Um, you know, when you guys share it, whether you share it on Instagram, Twitter, talk about your friends, I I appreciate it. And uh, it means a lot. I'd like to give a shout out to Moog for leaving the, the 59th review on iTunes. That means a lot. And I just want to thank you guys for spending, uh, you know, the past half hour with me here. And uh, as always, I will see you guys next Monday at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the release of episode 16 of the podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening or watching on YouTube. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Later.